Huawei's more or less a household name now, but only recently has it really begun crafting handsets that reflect its status as the second biggest smartphone manufacturer. Affordable, good enough alternatives to the bigger brands are no more. Huawei's now the one doing things other manufacturers wish they had thought of first. Case in point, the P20 Pro, which was launched in spring and raised the bar for smartphone photography. Six months later, we have the new Mate 20 Pro, which is a successor of sorts, not necessarily in name, but it does everything the P20 Pro did well, including its triple camera array and improves upon it. It's a pretty crazy piece of hardware and I really like it. Huawei's pulled a bit of a Samsung here, opting for curved glass front and back separated by an almost non-existent metal border. A familiar design that just seems to make bigger phones more comfortable to use. The Mate 20 Pro's three camera and flash are arranged in this big square block right on the back. Subtle it is not. It's bold, a bit different and I just like the symmetry of it, though it protrudes out from the body a little more than I'd like and its edges seem to be a dust magnet. But forget about all that and marvel at the shiny twilight finish. In my opinion, this moodier and less metallic blend of black and blue is even nicer than the Twilight version of the P20 Pro. Around the front, you've just got a whole lot of screen. The huge 6.3 inch curved display leaves little room for bezel. It's really high resolution, HDR, an OLED panel too, so there's tons of clarity there, vibrant colors and deep blacks. It's tall but not that wide, which is why what sounds like such a big screen doesn't feel all that big in your hand. There's also a fingerprint reader built into that display, and it works almost as fast as traditional readers do. There's a few milliseconds in it at most, but I haven't had much reason to use it because hidden away in that notch is a depth sensor for 3D face unlocking, and Huawei's blatant ripoff of an emoji. Facial recognition is instant, and it works day or night and at weird angles or when your face is half buried in a pillow. Overall, the build quality is solid, but I have experienced some scuffing of the front glass, which I'm not too happy about. I'm very careful with my phone, so I'm not sure what's caused this exactly. Perhaps it's just an anti-glare coating or something, because if the actual glass can't take whatever a coin rubbing up against it, then I don't imagine it will react well to even a minor fall. I know what you're thinking, get to the cameras already. The Mate 20 Pro does everything the P20 Pro did and more. The hardware is almost the same across both handsets, but the 20 megapixel monochrome sensor on the P20 Pro has been swapped out for a 20 megapixel color sensor on the Mate, and it makes the whole package even more versatile. There is so much to talk about here, but the quick takeaway is the Mate 20 Pro takes some incredible pictures. That's partly due to the hardware, mainly the 40 megapixel primary sensor, but also because of Huawei's master AI, which is like a very intelligent full auto mode. The AI helper identifies the scene and autumn landscape, for example, and then tweaks settings accordingly. The result is more often than not a highly detailed picture that looks way better than real life. It's almost like images have been run through a quick Photoshop edit. Colors are more vibrant, contrast is more dramatic, a filter without the filter. Like any auto mode, Master AI sometimes gets things a little wrong, an overexposure here, unwanted background blur there, but most snaps have a wow factor that is hard to replicate on other phones. Some people might not like these stylized images, but you can turn Master AI off and use the lighter touch auto mode or tweak all settings yourself in the pro mode. Either way, you still get all the lenses to play with. Like the P20 Pro, the Mate has an 8 megapixel camera that takes high quality images up to 3 times zoom. At 5 times zoom, the 8 and 40 megapixel cameras work together to reduce noise. And both phones also share an insane 24 megapixel front facing camera for selfies. The new 20 megapixel color sensor adds a couple of shooting options not available on the P20 Pro. For one, it's a super wide angle lens that effectively takes instant panoramic shots. And it's also good for really good close up macro shots too. These are particularly impressive, almost like having a simple microscope in your pocket. Low light situations are where both Huawei flagships really shine though. Pictures shot in dingy music venues are full of detail and notably lacking in noise and blown out light sources. Smartphone cameras are getting better all the time and alongside the Mate 20 and P20 Pro, I've been playing around with the Pixel 3 XL and Note 9. 
In some situations, I actually prefer the more natural color temperature of the Note 9, but you can't deny all the lenses and features of the Mate 20 Pro make it the new best camera phone money can buy. Huawei's done it again, it seems. Flagship performance hasn't really been worth talking about for a while now. Every new phone is super fast, responsive, plays games flawlessly at the highest settings and all that jazz. The Mate 20 Pro is no different in that respect. It's the first phone to be powered by Huawei's own 7 nanometer Kirin 980 processor, the main purpose of which is to improve both performance and battery life. Huawei's EMUI Android skin, now in version 9, is supposed to be more efficient now too. It's starting to look a little dated though, especially compared to the stylish material design of stock Android 9 Pie. You can almost feel this invisible energy preservation at work, because even as a power user, I've been squeezing the best part of two full days out of the Mate 20 Pro's admittedly larger than average battery. Getting your percentage back up to comfortable levels is pretty easy too. The phone supports super fast wire charging and quicker than usual wireless charging. And get this, it can wirelessly charge other phones. Now this is kind of gimmicky and you might never use it, but it's a feature completely unique to the Mate 20 Pro and that's kind of what this phone's all about. The newest and best of everything in one single device. Well, kind of. You know what's not the best? The fact that Huawei invented a proprietary memory card you have to buy if you want to expand the onboard storage. You probably won't need to since the lowest configuration still offers 128 gigabytes of space, but any micro SD card you have lying around at home is not welcome here. Only Huawei's new NM cards are. Official price TBC. You may already know that Huawei doesn't have the best relationship with the US government or carriers, so it's not formally launching the Mate 20 Pro in the States. In the UK, the phone costs £899 or roughly $1,150. Now that is expensive, I know, but it's the same price as the Note 9, nearly the same price as the Pixel 3 XL and significantly cheaper than the new top-end iPhones. With all that in mind, the Mate 20 Pro is worth every penny because it's easily the best phone out there right now. The amazing cameras, display, in-screen fingerprint reader, reverse wireless charging, that twilight finish, the screen scuffing. Okay, so not the screen scuffing bit, but if you are due an upgrade, lucky you. And even if you're not, or live somewhere where a Mate 20 Pro will be hard to come by, then you'll still benefit from this phone's existence. Huawei's shown that you can throw every premium feature at a phone and even invent a new one and still keep the price competitive. Now it's everyone else's turn to play catch up. So next year's flagship, regardless of brand, will be better thanks to the precedence Huawei setting with phones like the Mate 20 Pro.